Endovascular Treatment of Arterial and Venous Disease. This represents an overview of the current state of the art, but not a definitive assessment. Aortic aneurysms, standard infrarenal stent repair. Aneurysms are repaired with stent grafts under X-ray control. Guide wires are placed from both common femoral arteries up across the aortic aneurysm into the descending thoracic aorta. Over these guide wires, stent grafts are placed under X-ray control. The position of the renal arteries is identified and markers on the pre-packaged stent graft are used to align the top of the graft with the immediate infrarenal aorta. The plastic covering of the stent graft is removed progressively and the stent expands to seal against the infrarenal aortic wall. The plastic sheath is withdrawn until the left contralateral limb pops out into the aneurysm sac. Once this contralateral limb has been released, the catheter is placed into the contralateral limb from the left side and the remainder of the right iliac limb is released. A balloon is inserted which presses the stent graft against the wall of the aorta to complete the seal. The bottom of the right common iliac limb is released and the delivery package is removed. Over the guide wire that has been placed in the contralateral limb on the left side, a further stent graft is emplaced into the stump on the aortic graft from the left iliac artery. Covering sheath on this bridging stent graft is removed so that the graft is deployed inside the already positioned stump of the aortic stent and seals at this point and also seals at the lower point of the common iliac artery in this diagram, position 3. At the completion of this procedure, the aortic aneurysm has been sealed in the infrarenal aorta and in both common iliac arteries. No blood pressure should be exerted on the wall of the aortic aneurysm. This demonstrates an aortic stent with hooks at the top, contralateral limb and a long ipsilateral delivery side. This demonstrates an aortic aneurysm in a coronal scan by CT angiography. Digital subtraction angiography is used for standard bifurcated aortic stents. Some stents can be used which are aorto uniiliac combined with femorofemoral crossover grafts and occlusion of the contralateral side. This allows placement of a single graft but requires a femorofemoral crossover graft to reperfuse the contralateral limb. Here we see CT reconstructions of just such a procedure. Occasionally an aortic aneurysm will have unsatisfactory landing zones for an aortic stent and a fenestrated graft will need to be used to seal the aortic aneurysm around the renal arteries. In these cases we require fenestrations for the renal arteries through which are placed covered stents. Such an aneurysm is demonstrated here in a sagittal scan. One can see the aneurysm extends almost to the superior mesenteric artery. This is a coronal view of the same aneurysm demonstrating a very short aortic neck unsuitable for sealing on a standard aneurysm close to the renal arteries. This is a picture of a fenestrated graft. There are uncovered stents at the top which secure the top of the graft to the aortic wall. Fenestrations for the superior mesenteric artery are visible and for two renal arteries off to the centre line. Into this graft is placed a standard aortic bifurcated graft which will go down into the ipsilateral iliac artery and the contralateral stump will open into the aneurysm sac. Occasionally a complex aneurysm will require a branch repair involving the iliac arteries. We call this an iliac bifurcation device. Popliteal aneurysms can also be repaired by tube stent grafts. These procedures are usually percutaneous and can be done under local anaesthetic. In this picture we see a popliteal aneurysm and it is possible to make out the knee joint. The diameter of the popliteal artery is demonstrated above and below the knee joint. The stent graft has been placed across the popliteal artery aneurysm and we can see that there is no endo leak and there is smooth flow of blood through the left popliteal artery. Aneurysms of the visceral arteries are not common, but when they occur they can be controlled with percutaneous coil embolisation. Here we see an aneurysm of the splenic artery which has been selected out 
via the celiac axis and splenic artery and embolized with coils to occlude the aneurysm sac. Here we see an aneurysm of the hepatic artery, which is also being treated by coil embolization. In this angiogram, we can clearly see a relatively large aneurysm of the renal artery on the left. In the lower left picture, it is possible to make out the jet of blood entering this aneurysm. Further pictures demonstrating this aneurysm of the left kidney. This aneurysm was treated by a percutaneous approach from the back into the aneurysm and coil embolization was conducted after placement of a catheter through a lumbar puncture directly into the aneurysm. These are pictures demonstrating the needle placement and guide wire placement followed by catheter placement and embolization into this aneurysm. Treatment of lower limb occlusive disease is achieved by balloon angioplasty of stenosed or occluded arteries, often combined with stenting. Occasionally in the presence of significant clot loads, fast urokinase administration can be conducted and embolization of clot can be overcome by suction embolectomy through catheters placed in the tibial vessels. This is a picture of a coaxial clot suction device. There is a central obturator through a 7 French sheath followed by a 9 French sheath. These catheters are placed over a guide wire down into the arteries containing clot. Suction is applied to each successively. As they are removed, the clot is withdrawn into successively larger catheters. The catheters are then either removed containing large amounts of clot or the clot is sucked back into the syringe. In this picture we can see the assembled coaxial suction catheter system. This is an example of clots that can be removed from tibial vessels using this system. Treatment of lower limb occlusive disease, such as the May Therma syndrome, are undertaken using angioplasty and invariably stenting of the iliac veins. The most common clinical finding in May Therma syndrome, which is occlusion of the left common iliac artery due to compression of the left internal iliac vein between the external iliac artery and the spine, demonstrated here is cross pelvic venous collaterals in the abdominal wall which is a clinical sign of venous occlusive disease in the iliac system. Here we see a phlebogram with injection of contrast into the left common femoral vein. Cross pelvic collaterals are demonstrated. There is termination of the left common iliac vein with collaterals passing up the azygous system bilaterally and across the pelvis from left to right. Similar findings from a different angle. Similar cross pelvic collaterals demonstrated in the same patient. Balloon angioplasty has been performed after placement of a guide wire, but one can see that the cross pelvic collaterals persist due to compression outside the vein. A stent will be required to maintain the patency of the vein and keep the vein open. In this picture we can see angioplasty has been performed, stent placement has occurred, flow is directly from the iliac system up into the inferior vena cava. There is no evidence of cross pelvic collaterals because there is no distal obstruction. Treatment of lower limb varicose veins can be achieved either through thermal ablation using endovenous laser or radiofrequency ablation of either the long or the short saphenous systems or both at the same time. Varicose veins is caused by associated reflux in the superficial venous system. Reflux can be demonstrated using continuous wave Doppler or duplex ultrasound and we call this reflux blood flowing in the wrong direction. Ultrasound is often used in the treatment of varicose veins to demonstrate reflux and the presence of varicose veins. The site of reflux is important in that many procedures are directed to the site of this reflux to cure varicose veins. As we can see, there are several modalities for the treatment of varicose veins. Surgery, endovenous laser therapy and sclerotherapy are occasionally used in the treatment of varicose veins. Each of these modalities has its strong points and weak points.